Well, here it is. We are making a rubber band car. Now, this is a pretty simple project that has a lot of engineering thought and, and things that can go into it because it's a pretty simple thing to make, but it's a really difficult thing to make well and to improve on the most basic designs. So I'm going to show you the basics of making a rubber band car. Now, here would be a car with uh, Dixie cup wheels. Here's a car with cardboard wheels, a different car that has cardboard wheels. And I'm bringing up the wheels first thing because they're super important. The reason I'm talking about wheels right away is they are the most important part. I want to show you some clips of what happens when a well-built car doesn't have wheels that are perfectly round or perfectly centered or that are just too small and or cardboard. So take a look. If we look online, what we'll find it. Most of the tutorials that are online almost recommend these hard plastic bottle cap wheels. And the reason you'll see them is because a lot of people have bottle caps. But we don't want to have a car that doesn't work very well. Now here's what I'm going to recommend. We're either going to go with CDs or something large and round, or there are Lego wheels. So there's all sorts of Lego sets that have wheels. Now the difference between using these wheels and using this wheel will be simply this one will go much, much, much further than this one. Because every time that that axle turns, every time that this axle turns, the small wheel, let, let's see how far it goes on the mat when I turn it one time. It, it's about that far. So starting here, rolling it one time around, gets to here. This CD, on the other hand, if I start with it right here, makes it all the way over to there using just one turn of the axle. So small wheels will make it fast. Large wheels will make it go far. And you kind of have to pick which one you want. <laughs> so the basics of making a rubber band car, after you figure out what your wheels are going to be, we need a, a frame. And really briefly, just a couple popsicle sticks in a V shape. We'll get us started. If I glue the fronts together. Now a really common mistake is people will glue the axle directly to this set of popsicle sticks. Well, that's no good. This thing has to be able to turn. So it, the wheel will be turning with this on it. So we have to be able to let this turn. The simple solution is simply a straw. The next mistake I'll see is that people will, will just glue an entire straw on here. They'll have a skewer inside of it. Well, we, we need to have a way for the rubber band to get to our skewer. That's why we cannot simply leave, the, leave it whole. I've got two little bits of straw here. Here's a straw, here's a straw. It's open in the middle, and I want this opening to be as large as I can get it because the rubber band is going to wrap around this center of the axle. So, put hot glue here, hot glue here, and then I'm going to put my straws kind of as far away from each other as they can be. I've seen a lot of different students put the straws with a tiny gap in between. And the problem there is that the rubber band gets all bound up and, and wraps around the straw while well, the straw is not moving. So we need these straws to be far apart. Did you notice that I put the skewer into it before I put it on? Well now they are perfectly pointing at each other. I've seen students want to glue them but sometimes they'll glue them like this or sometimes they'll glue them like this and it won't quite work out. So I'll have the skewer in there and then it will be perfectly lined up. Well this will be the back axle or where the, the drive wheels will be. We need to give it something to grab onto, some little tiny piece of something. And you don't actually want this to be very big. It's just, just barely large enough for a rubber band to catch it. 
I would prefer this one to actually be smaller than this. I'm going to use these Lego wheels on here. It's even better if you can use um, the Lego connector for the axle itself because then the wheel, the wheels will be lined up. There's a chance that I have these not perfectly in the center when I put them in here. Try to center them the best I can. Now let me show you what happens when wheels aren't centered. The wheels do not work very well, as you can see. Well, back to this car. There's one more thing for you to figure out. You need to figure out how long you want it to be. We've got our back wheels. We've got the axle that spins. Now, if we want to keep the car small, we'll have to put a small rubber band here. However, I prefer these large rubber bands. And to make this work, sometimes you just need a longer car chassis. So here we go. That's as long as we want it. The rubber band should mount on a place that is slightly longer than the rubber band itself. So if I put the rubber band over here loose, I don't want to put my mount up here. I want to mount it somewhere up here so it has to stretch a little bit. This will work even without front wheels. So I'm going to let this go. And there it goes. This works better than the ones in those little clips because the wheels are grippy. The rubber on these wheels grips the ground. It doesn't let it slip. The wheels are also very round. Some of these projects have wheels that are not quite so round. And if a wheel is off center, then what will happen is, is that it will bounce on the ground. So make sure that you pick some good wheels when you're finished, please understand that the first rubber band car that you make isn't the final one. You can add details to the top. I saw one group had a really awesome um, engine set up. They had Baby Yoda driving it. They had it totally decked out. And these things can turn into really cool setups once you really get into it. Now that you're done making your rubber band car, I want you to try to figure out how to make it better. So thinking like an engineer will be, a, so the wheels spin at the beginning. Okay, how do we make it so that those wheels don't go so fast? Or how can the wheels grip the ground better? If you remember, we had some that had added weight. They added weight so that there's more friction, there's more force on the back wheels. So maybe they don't slip. That's why you'll see weight sometimes. Sometimes we made cars longer because then we can have a longer rubber band that would pull for a longer period of time. If your band is this short, it's going to pull and be done. If your band is long, it's got a longer um, pull. And so you can put a long rubber band inside of there. There's other cars where the diameter of the wheels matters. So if, you're, if your wheels were this big, how would it be different if your wheels were, were gigantic? There's there's a lot more thinking that you can be doing with this project. I want to encourage you to, to talk to somebody, to talk to me, to try to make the, the car that you made better. Have a great rest of your day.